hopefully you've had an opportunity to work through this practice problem. I'm going to go ahead and work through the solutions now. And I've gone ahead and I have put in the Lewis dot structures we're going to use already. So this is building on the work we've already done through this lecture series. And we're going to practice drawing in three dimensions the molecules that we built Lewis dot structures for earlier. So I'm going to start with C3H6F2. And I have a structure for that right here. So to build this in three dimensions, it actually helps me first before I draw it to kind of take a look at the geometries that I have for each one and label them. So my only central atoms that I have here are these three carbon atoms. They're the only things bonded to more than one thing. And so they all have the same geometry because they're each bonded to four different things. So this first carbon is bonded to this hydrogen, fluorine, hydrogen, and this carbon here. It doesn't have any lone pairs. So this will be tetrahedral with a bonding of about 109.5 degrees. Now let's look at that central carbon to make sure that it's really the same geometry. Uh, now, when I've, I've, I've looked at those ones around the carbon and a common mistake is once I consider an atom bonded to one, I kind of forget about it. Um, but so if I'm gonna look at my central carbon here, I need to look at everything that is bonded to it, even if I've already kind of considered it for a different atom. So it's got this hydrogen here, that's obvious, but it's also bonded to this central carbon here and this central carbon here. So it's bonded to four things, no lone pairs. It is also tetrahedral with 109.5 degree bond angle. So looking at my last carbon, hopefully it's becoming a little bit easier to see now for the third, sorry. That, so this last central one has this hydrogen, fluorine, hydrogen, and that other central carbon are all bonded to it. And so it's going to have a tetrahedral geometry, again, with about 109.5 degree um, bond angle. So when I'm drawing this, um, especially for these longer ones, I like to start with what I call the backbone, which is the central atoms. And I'm gonna put them all in the same plane as one another. So I'm gonna have a carbon bonded to a carbon bonded to a carbon. Remember for this tetrahedral geometry, I'm gonna have something, two lines that are in the plane about 109 degrees apart, and then one coming out and one going back. So I'm gonna to try to have this basic shape for all three of my tetrahedral compounds. So we'll do this. So then I'm gonna have these two fluorines attached. So I'm gonna have my fluorine come down in the same plane. So now I, and I'll, I'll add my lone pairs because I always add my lone pairs. So now for each of these carbons, I have these two in-plane bonds right here. So for this carbon, it's right here and right here. So what that leaves is my wedge and my dash. And so I can come in and put those in. So for my first carbon, I have my wedge and my dash, and I have two hydrogens still to bond to it. So I'll put my hydrogens here. And for my next one, I've got my wedge and my dash, hydrogen and hydrogen wedge, and I'm running into my label from earlier, dash, hydrogen, and hydrogen. And so I can see, now I've built this 3D picture around each of these carbon atoms, and they're all tetrahedral, and they all have bond angles of about 109.5 degrees. And so that's building that three-dimensional picture, especially when you have a series of tetrahedral carbons, it's nice to put them in this little zigzag. It just makes it easier to draw. All right, let's do our next one. Um, so we've got our two carbons uh, with a double bond and then our two hydrogens. I'm gonna start with my carbons again. Um, and so I'm gonna start with these here and I'm gonna put a double bond in between them. And then from there, I'm gonna have to build out based on my geometries. So for both of these carbons, they have three things bonded to them. So I'll show you here, I've got one, two, three. So this is gonna be trigonal, planar. The other central atom that I have is this oxygen right here. And this oxygen has two things bonded to it and it has two lone pairs. So this is going to be bent with a bond angle that is less than 109 degrees. 
So I'll come through now and build this out. I'm starting with this carbon-carbon double bond. And then each of these carbons has a 120 degree angle, which means it'll be in the plane of the paper without wedge, wedges or dashes. Uh, you could do it also with a wedge and a dash. So our, our trigonal planers look like this, right? If you did it with a wedge and a dash, it would be like a carbon-carbon like this, and then one going back and one coming out and one coming out. And one coming out. It could be like that as well. But let's keep it simple. Um, all right, so from there, I see that I have hydrogens on the top. So I'll put my hydrogens in. And then I have these oxygen atoms bonded to these carbons as well. But now these oxygen atoms have lone pairs. And so they are going to be bent. So I need to get something that looks like about 109 degrees. So I could do this a couple of different ways. I could go up like this and make my hydrogen go here with my lone pairs like this. I could also come down to a hydrogen. It doesn't really matter because it'll be 109 or less than. And here I have 120. And so that's how I would draw this one in three dimensions. And I didn't even have to use wedges and dashes for it. All right, moving on to our next one. All right, so looking at this one, I've got um, some carbons and nitrogens. So uh, looking at my first carbon, I just have two things bonded to it. So this is gonna be linear with about 180 degree bond angle. And I can see that this next carbon is the same. It has just two things bonded to it as well. So it will also be linear with about 180 degree bond angle. Looking at my nitrogen then, it has one, two, three, and a lone pair. So that's going to make it, rather than trigonal planar, that lone pair makes it trigonal pyramidal. With a bond angle of a less than 109 degrees. And trigonal planar, trigonal pyramidal, these are really easy to get mixed up. It's okay if it happens. It just takes a little practice. All right, so with my geometries, my bond angles, I can now start to build this. So I'm gonna start with my hydrogen and it's bonded to a carbon and linear is so easy to do because it's 180 degrees. You just draw it in a line. So there, I've just, I've gotten most of this done just like that. But now the trigonal pyramidal is going to be a little bit different. So our trigonal pyramidal ones are gonna have to have a wedge and a dash to communicate its structure. You could do, this is the common way to do it. You could also, I'm, I'm guessing, do something like this as well, or have something with a wedge, but you'll need to have three. It's kind of like you eliminate one of the bonded things in your tetrahedral pattern. So I'm going to have one coming out here and one going back and I'll put my lone pair as well. All right. So now I've got a 3d picture for C let's look at D. Uh, so D is only one central atom, which is nice. And I have five things around it. So here's my central atom. So it's going to be uh, trigonal by pyramidal with bond angles of 90 degrees and 120 because it doesn't have any lone pairs. So when I draw this, I'm going to put my phosphorus in the center. And uh, the easy way to draw a trigonal bipyramidal, in my opinion, is I start with kind of this T of lines. And then I do one going back and one coming forward. And so this is my 120 degree bond angle. And here's my 90 degree bond angle. And all of these are chlorine. So I'll just put chlorine around at each one. And there I have something that's trigonal bipyramidal. I forgot to highlight these earlier. All right, last one, phosphoric acid. Here we go. All right, so I have a couple of central atoms here. I've got this phosphorus, and then each of these three oxygen atoms are central atoms. And so looking at this phosphorus first, I can see it has, oh, sorry. What? Hmm. One, two, three, four things around it and no lone pairs. So this is going to be tetrahedral. Now looking at each of the oxygen atoms, it has two bonded atoms and two lone pairs. So this is going to have that bent geometry that's less than 109 degrees for a bond angle. So now I can start building this. Uh, my phosphorus in the center, 
And I've got this double bond. So I'm going to, I'm going to put that pointing up to my oxygen. And then I'm going to keep using that tetrahedral geometry, right? Where I've got two in the plane and one coming out and one going back using the wedges and the dashes. And so I'll have oxygens at each of these. And now I need to incorporate a bent geometry at the oxygen atoms. Um, and so I can do that going up or down or kind of to the side. So I'm going to do this one coming down to a hydrogen. So I'm going off to the side, this one coming up to a hydrogen. And you can kind of play around with it, whatever kind of fits on your page best. It's like a snapshot in all of its motion. And then I have a 3D picture of phosphoric acid. <laughs>